Hi, welcome to the 8.3 worksheet that I will be uh, going over right now. So, uh, here we go. Um, feel free to pause the video if you need to. Uh, if you don't understand, rewind and rewatch. Let's begin. And always have a smile on your face. All right, <coughs> number one. Each regular polygon has a radii. Apothem as shown. Find the measure of each numbered angle. Uh, first, we're going to figure out how many sides this is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides. So to find the central angle, we're going to do 360 divided by 8. Uh, take your trusty, rusty calculator. Mine's not rusty because it's made out of plastic. Uh, 45 degrees is my central angle. The apothem right here is going to cut that in half. So if I cut that in half, I'm going to get 22.5. And then angle 3 right down here at the bottom corner, uh, since that's a triangle, if I just take 180, if I subtract 22.5 and I subtract 90, I should be left over with the final result. So 180 minus 90, that's right there, minus the 22.5, that should be my leftover of 67.5. All right. Number 4. It says find the area of a regular polygon with a given apothem and side length. Remember, our apothem uh, is very important. Our side length is very important. We want this formula, one half apothem times perimeter. So I really, I just have to go ahead and justify my perimeter, which is just going to be eight times my side length of 17.2. Uh, so I get eight times 17.2 in my calculator, which is going to give me about a perimeter of 137.6. With my apothem, uh, I'm just going to plug into my calculator one half. 20.8 times the 137.6. So times that by 0.28 and divide by 2 and then get my final answer of 1,431 point. It says nearest hundred, so 04, and that's going to be in square meters. Number five, a nonagon is a nine-sided polygon. So for my perimeter, I'm going to do nine times 37. And that's going to be a perimeter of 333. So my area is going to be one half, my apothem of 50.9 times the perimeter of 333. I already have 33 in there from nine times 37. So I've just got to multiply by 50.9 and then divide by two. That leaves me with my answer of 8474. 0.85, and that's going to be also in square meters. Questions? Of course not. I'm talking to myself. I have no friends. All right, number six. Moving on. Uh, we actually are given the apothem and a side length, so we can actually do this similar to the two above. Uh, but it does ask us for the central angle, so the central angle is going to be 360 divided by 5. And if we do that, I believe we're going to get... There, uh, 72. So there's my central angle. The perimeter, that's just going to be 9 times 5, because there's 5 different sides, which is going to give me 45. And then the area is just 1 half of my apothem, 6.2, times my perimeter of 45. So that's 45 times 6.2, and then divided by 2 is going to give us 139.5 square millimeters. Uh, we're also given the apothem on this one. Um, we're going to find our central angle, which is 360 divided by 3, which is 120. My perimeter, that's just going to be 3 times 17, which is 51. So my area is going to be 1 half of my apothem, which is 4.9, times my perimeter of 51. And that is going to be equivalent to 124.95. Uh, it does say leave your answer in radical form. Um, we're not quite to problems that have radical form yet, so that's why none of these are in radical form, just FYI. And that's in square feet. Okay, moving on, number eight. Uh, this time we're in a little bit of trouble because we just have our um, apothem, but we don't have a side. So. We're going to use our center angle. Now, I'm going to use my little cheat sheet guy right here. So if I flip this open, I actually know that a hexagon is going to create a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So I'm actually going to use this triangle to help me out. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that little whoop, 
piece out. Um, I know it's 30 and 60, and they gave me 5.5 .5 rad 3, which is lovely. Um, so I have my apothem. Uh, my central angle, we can see right here, is 60 degrees for every hexagon. So that's just 360 <laughs> divided by uh, 6, so I'm going to get 60 degrees. My one side, so I really want to solve for this one side, and how I can do that is by using my special right triangles. Uh, this happens to be in the L rad 3 position, and this is L. And that's actually really good news for me, because if 5.5 .5 rad 3 is in the L rad 3 position, if I divide the rad 3 out, L is just going to be 5.5. .5. But remember, that's not my full side length, that's only my half side length. Um, so it's really 5.5 .5 and another 5.5, .5, which if you add 5.5 .5 plus 5.5, .5, you're going to get a full side of 11. And then we're just going to multiply that by 6 for my 6 side lengths, and I'm going to get 66. And then we can find our area uh, by doing area equals 1 half my apothem, which is 5.5 .5 rad 3 times 66. Now, what I actually like to do is just leave the rad 3 out of my calculation altogether. And so I'm just going to go and do 5.5 .5 times 66, which is going to give me 363. And then I'm going to divide that by 2, which is going to give me 181.5. And then I just slap on the rad 3 at the end with my units of measure, and I am done. And I found my area. Number 9 is a similar fashion. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use my little cheat sheet. Um, again, I know my central angle is just 360 divided by 3, which is 120, and then the apothem is going to cut that in half to give me 60, 30 triangle. Again, so I'm going to pop that guy out there. Notice that the 30 was on top of this one, but this one, the top is 60, so we're going to put 60 and 30. Now, this time I don't know my apothem. Uh, but I do know my half side. Again, the apothem is going to cut that in half. So instead of 26, I'm going to get 13 here. Now, my central angle, like I saw before, it's 120. I don't know my apothem. My perimeter is going to be pretty easy to find. It's just going to be 26 times 3, which is going to give me 78. But I do have to do some research finding my apothem. And so to find the apothem, I'm going to label my pieces. This is going to be... L rad 3, and this is going to be L in this situation. They flip flopped my 30 and 60. So to get L rad 3, uh, I just have to divide both sides by rad 3. So if I take 13 and I divide it by rad 3 in my calculator, uh, I get 13 rad 3 over 3. So that's my apothem, 13 rad 3 over 3. And we can actually deal with that, and I'm not too worried. And my area is going to be 1 half my apothem times my perimeter of 78. And again, how am I going to solve for this? Well, I kind of just leave the rad 3 out of it, and I just slap that in at the end. Um, so 13 divided by 3 is going to be, well, 13 divided by 3, and I just multiply it by 78. That gives me a whole number of 338, and then I divide it by 2, which gives me 169. But then I just leave the rad 3 on there and my units of measure. Plug that in. And we are good to go. 169 rad 3 square feet. Let's flip it over. We have two more big problems and then two slightly smaller problems, and we're done. Uh, this is a square. A square is also going to be one of my special right triangle uh, guys. So when I open it up, I'm going to get my, my central angle to be 90s. The apothem is going to cut in half, so I'm going to get a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so this is going to be 45, 45. The 8 is referring to my radius right there, which is not super helpful to us. Uh, we do know that the central angle is 90, then gets cut in half to 45. And we have my apothem, and we have my half side. And I'm going to have to solve for both, but special right triangles are actually not that hard to solve for. If we look at this, this is in my L rad 2 position, and both of these are L, so they're going to be the exact same. And uh, if you take 8 and divide it by rad 2, we get 4 rad 2. So we're going to get 4 rad 2 for each of these. So my apothem is 4 rad 2. Now, this is only half a side, so I'm not really referring to the entire side as 4 rad 2. 
So I do have to double that. So if I take 4 rad 2 and times it by 2, I get 8 rad 2. That would be my whole side. And then the perimeter is just going to be 8 rad 2 times 4, uh, which 8 times 4 is at 32, I believe. But I'm going to double check just so I don't make a mistake. 32 rad 2. And we just kind of throw it all into my formula. 1 half apothem, which is 4 rad 2 times my perimeter, which is 32 rad 2. And this is, again, I'm going to leave the rads to the end. I'm going to do 4 times 32, which is 128. Divide that by 2, and I get 64 times rad 2 times rad 2. And what is rad 2 times rad 2? Well, that just ends up being 2. So I get 64 times 2, which gives me 128. And that's going to be in square centimeters for my area. Last but not least, we have the hexagon. We've already seen the hexagon once, so we're going to see it again. Again, we're going to get that central angle to be 360 divided by 6, so I'm going to get 60 degrees. And we know we're going to get a 30, 60, 90 inside that little right triangle that we love so very much. 30 and 60. This time they're giving me a side length, uh, so I'm going to cut that in half to give myself 14. I care about the apothem. I don't care about the other pieces. So, apothem, I do not know. Perimeter I can find pretty easily. It's just going to be 6 times 28. So I'll take care of that real quick to get 168. But now i got to solve for the apothem. I can do that pretty easily. This is in the L position. This is in L rad 3. And they couldn't have served it up to me any nicer. If I got 14 as L, apothem is going to be 14 rad 3. So very easy. Area equals 1 half apothem, 14 rad 3 times my perimeter of 168. And again, I'm going to just deal with my whole numbers and slap the rad 3 on at the end. So I'm going to do 14 times 168. Pachow, divide by 2. Paching. And we just slap that rad 3 on there, slap the units on, and call it a day. There we go. And we got a little factoring. No fun like factoring fun. Um, so here we go. Um, let's see. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to move everything over here. So we're going to get 3x squared. We're going to subtract the 7x and subtract the 6, set equal to 0. Look for a GCF. I don't see any GCF here, so we're going to have to split the middle term. So we're going to go ahead and do 3 times negative 6, which is negative 18, and add to a negative 7. We're going to think, does anyone know two numbers that multiply to negative 18 and add to negative 7? Yes. 2 and negative 9. Thank you, Inner Self, for telling me. appreciate that. My Inner Self did have a little deeper voice than I do, but that's okay. I'll hit puberty one day. All right, 3x squared. Uh, we're going to throw the 9x over here just because I feel like it will pair with the 3 a little bit better. Uh, plus 2x minus 6 equals 0. And we're going to group those. And GCF, we're going to be able to take a 3x out of that bad boy. That's going to leave me with x minus 3. And whatever I take out of here, I hope it leaves me with the same thing. And it looks like I can take out a 2. Just leave that. x minus 3. Those are the same. So I'm going to get 3x plus 2 equals 0. And x minus 3 equals 0. This one, we're going to subtract 2, divide by 3. So that's going to give me negative 2 thirds. And this one, I'm just going to add 3. And that would just give me x equals 3. All right, this next one looks a little tricky, and that's probably because it might be a little tricky. Uh, we're going to have to foil these and then move the 18 over and then factor, so a little bit of fun. But x times uh, that, that's going to give me x squared minus 5x, and this is going to give me 2x and negative 10. We're going to combine like terms to get x squared negative 3x. I have a negative 10. I'm going to subtract the 18 over to give me negative 28. Luckily, I should be able to factor this normal because I don't have any A value in front. So I'm going to ask myself and see if myself can help me again. What two numbers multiply negative 28, add to a negative 3? 4, negative 7. My inner self is clutch yet again. X plus 4 is going to equal 0, and X minus 7 is going to equal 0. Uh, so we just subtract. We get X equals negative 4, and X equals positive 7. Ladies and gentlemen, people, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day.